Hello and welcome to this edition of Labrador Lodge Project. Things are going to be moving along quite a bit faster here at the Lodge this week. I went out to the store today to purchase some last things that I needed to get a lot done here in the downstairs. I purchased some drywall to fill in some cracks in the ceiling of the living room from where we had that water leak and I want to replace a section of plaster not just cover over because I'm really concerned that it might not hold up because it might have too much damage from water leakage. So I'd rather just replace it with some new drywall in that one section. And I'll be showing you that when we get to that part of this. I also purchased some trim paint, some ceiling paint, a uh, second color of trim paint for some fireplace work we're going to do, and then a whole bunch of new light fixtures. As you see, we're in the kitchen today, and this fluorescent light is miraculously working. It normally won't turn on. I left it on all weekend and somewhere along the line it finally decided to warm up and turn on. It didn't do that any of the nights last week no matter how many hours left it running so I don't really know why it started working but guess what? It's out of here anyway. Over in the dining room that light fixture currently is about as bright as a jar of lightning bugs and frankly that just doesn't cut it. The entryway has another fluorescent light that sometimes works, sometimes doesn't and really, who wants to be a guest at someone's house and get greeted with fluorescent light inside the front door? That is lame. So we're going to be getting rid of that as well. Now I want to tell you a little bit about what's going to be going on this week. It's a little late this evening. Tomorrow is trash day, so I'll be taking out a lot of construction debris tonight, cleaning up the yard of, of branches and things that have fallen down in various storms, and probably won't be getting a lot done inside the house tonight towards these different goals. I might get some ceiling paint up uh, where the fixtures need to be replaced so that way that's dry and we can work in that area. But I want to tell you a little bit about where we're going to go because it's going to be a mismatch of things happening this week. Projects sort of overlapping each other as I work from one thing to another depending on paint drying and, and whatever else. The downstairs of this house is a classic. This is a colonial style house. We have plaster walls, we have molding around, we've got base molding, we have molding around the doors and windows, we have some crown molding, we have fireplace mantles and fireplaces. This is a very classic colonial style. And the last thing that I want to do is go ahead and try to make this house into something it's not. But at the same time, it isn't 1931 anymore, nor is it 1971, like most of the stuff in this house. It is 2012, and so what we're going to be going for in this house is a bit of modern elegance, is what I'm going to try to call it. What I've done is I've picked bright, bold colors. Now when I say bright, you might look at them and go, that's not so bright, that's a deep color. But it's, it may be deeper shades, richer shades, but there are brighter tones to them. They are not the deep gray uh, shades of those tones. They're the brighter shades of those tones. And then we're also going to be putting in light fixtures that are more modern but still uh, fit in with the style of the house. By mixing and matching some more modern styles and a more modern color palette mixed in with crisp white molding at the crown base and around doors and windows, we're going to create a kind of classic look at the same time as we make it a little bit more hip, a little bit more modern. So keep a look for that. Now, let me describe to you the various colors we're going to be using, so I have to do this again later on as we do each piece. In the hallway and foyer, we're using a bit of a tannish yellow color. Now, yellow is a color that for most people, psychologically, it makes them want to move. It's not a place, it's not a color you relax in. And so it's very common in foyers and hallways and things like that because it makes people want to pass through that area to somewhere else. So we're going to be using that psychology a little bit in our hallway, stairwell, and in the foyer to get people moving along. But not a real bright kind of goldish yellow because that's a bit garish, it's going to clash. More muted, uh, closer to a sandy beige, but it's still a little bit yellow to get that feel. In the living room, we're going to be using a very rich blue. That's a nice calming color. People are going to want to sit down and relax in a room like that. And that's exactly what you want out of your living room. You want people to come over and enjoy sitting down and spending time with you. 
and feel relaxed. And so we're going to be having that blue color in the living room. The dining room is going to have a nice sumptuous purple. It gives you that little bit of regal feeling. At the same time, it's still a little soothing, but it actually is somewhat a bit of a stimulant to the appetite. And this is a good for a room where you're going to be dining. You want to sit down and feel relaxed and not rushed to be able to enjoy your meal, but you also don't want to be so tranquilized by the surroundings that you're just not particularly hungry or you just don't really enjoy things as well. This is more like a, like a wine kind of color and it's going to be really nice to sit in in a dining room and give it a bit of a really high-end feel, but at the same time not make you feel out of place. Here in the kitchen we'll be using a bit of a Tuscan red. Now that is a combination of your red, but it has a little bit more towards a clay end with a little bit of brown in it. And what you're getting there is you're getting the balance of two colors. For most people, the brown shades tend to make them feel more like homebody, nesting, very comfort. And then the red shades make you invigorated and really want to do things. By mixing the two together, what you're doing is creating a space in your kitchen that both stimulates you to do things, but also makes you feel at home in the kitchen. And so we'll be go ahead and using that. We're going to be accenting that. We have black appliances here in the kitchen, and we're going to be going ahead and painting the metal cabinets here that are white. We're going to be painting them the same gloss black as our appliances, leaving the ceramic white sink and countertop. And on the other side of the room, we will have the white countertop over there, and then we'll be refinishing the wood into a nice sort of cherry stain that's going to complement our Tuscan red walls and then we'll be doing something with the floor. I haven't exactly figured out what that's going to be yet. Either it's going to be some sort of uh, linoleum, vinyl flooring that picks up some stone accents to sort of tie in the whole Tuscan kitchen thing, or we'll be putting down some sort of laminate flooring that pulls in the same sort of wood tones from the cabinets. It's really hard to tell. I have to look at some products, see how they're going to hold up to dogs going in and out this door behind me before we decide on what kind of floor is going to go here in the kitchen. In the other rooms, we'll probably be pulling up the carpeting at some point and then replacing that with area rugs as opposed to wall-to-wall -wall carpeting. Uh, the reason for that is that wall-to-wall -wall carpeting in areas where you have a lot of traffic, such as hallways and around furniture where you don't have a, a lot of open space, so in a dining room we have to walk around the table, it beats it down and creates these little trails and, and stutch all through your floor. And that really starts to look bad as time goes on. Uh, we may decide in the living room to put a wall-to-wall -wall carpeting because that's a more open flowing floor plan, but with the fireplace in there and the potential to have uh, accidents or so with uh, a, a hot poker from playing with the wood in there, we might go ahead and put in an area rug in there as well so that way we can keep a good buffer away from the fireplace. Uh, it does have a little surround, but if you've ever been to anybody's house that has wall-to-wall -wall carpeting and has a fireplace or a wood stove, you'll often see these little burn marks in the carpet. It melts because it's made out of plastic, but they'll go and they'll be poking it with that poker and without thinking about it, they'll drop the tip down and boom, just like that because it's plastic, it just singes away and you'll see these little marks around. Uh, the edges of people's fireplace. So I think we might be looking away from that and going to an area rug in there as well. But we'll see what sort of things are available when we go ahead and go look at that room. We do have nice wood floors underneath this nasty linoleum and underneath that nasty carpet, but I'm not sure how good they still are and how much effort would go into trying to restore them. And even then, you probably still want to put an area rug down because just plain wood floors all through, uh, it's a little bit harder to clean. You have to mop and mop and mop as opposed to just running a vacuum through. So if we can refresh some of the edges of the flooring, we can put an area rug down. You can see some nice wood floor around it. You'll get the best of both and you won't have to do quite as much cleaning with your floor. We'll also be doing some painting upstairs in the front bedroom to get that ready for me to camp out in there as I continue to work on this project until we get the master bedroom finished. That room will be getting a sort of 
light gray paint. Research has shown that gray is a color that stimulates creative thinking, which is why you see a lot of gray in cubicle walls and office buildings. It's not because they couldn't pick a more dreary color. Really, they could. They used to use a beige color, which really didn't do much for anybody. That gray color actually stimulates creative thinking is what the researchers saw. And since that room is going to be primarily used as a home office, I figured that would be a good color in there. It also allows us to be able to put up different window treatments, uh, different carpeting, and whatever else we want in the room and be able to change the feel of the room very quickly because it's a much more neutral color than some of the other colors we're using downstairs. And that brings up an interesting point between the upstairs and downstairs of the house. The downstairs is our formal spaces. This is where visitors come in and out. We're going to use bolder, richer colors. We're going to be creating that classical elegance feel. It's going to be a little more formal and a little more bold than upstairs. Upstairs is where you go to relax. You're going to go to sleep. You're going to be doing some work from a home office. You're going to maybe have your guests come and relax upstairs for their own private space. That is going to use much lighter colors. Like I said, a light gray in the front bedroom and the other rooms upstairs will also be getting lighter colors. Probably still using the same ideas like up in this room because it will be a home office it's getting a light gray because that gray color stimulates creativity but we're going to keep it light because it's upstairs in the casual spaces. We'll be using probably light blue or a light green in the different bedrooms to be able to create the kind of feel we want, the same sort of color feels we're creating downstairs with our bold colors, but upstairs in a much lighter, casual feel. That also means that we have a lot more flexibility with our carpeting, with furniture, with bedspreads, with your window treatments. You can change the feel of the room if you get bored with it without having to repaint. Downstairs, because the colors are so bold, it's going to pretty much lock us in to a certain way the rooms are going to be. We don't want that upstairs. If I decide I want some red sheets or some blue sheets or black sheets or whatever I want to get, and in my case I'm probably deciding it because something's on sale and I'm just going to go ahead and buy that, not because I have a particular preference for what color they are, I want to be able to do that and not have to worry about, oh my god, the whole room looks like some sort of circus moved in. I want it to blend nicely. So we're going to be using brighter shades up there, not as intense of a color, that way we have a lot more flexibility and it also is that casual feel that you want in your private spaces of the house. So you're going to notice a very big difference between upstairs and downstairs as we move through. I won't be explaining all of this color psychology again to you most likely. I might a little bit remind you, but not as much. Now if you're interested in the psychology of color, you can look up and research about these different things. You know, a lot is made out of feng shui and the placement of furniture and the placement of windows and things. And you know what? When you have a house and it's already there and you're not designing it from scratch, I'm sorry, the door's where the door is and the window's where the window is and there's not a whole lot you're going to be able to do about it. And maybe you can move some furniture around a little bit, but there isn't a whole lot you can do to change the energy of the house. Uh, it's a nice idea, but it's really hard to do that if you subscribe to it. it. You just don't have the option of moving around the house and turning all the rooms the way you want them turned. You just are stuck with what you have. And so people can never really fully apply those when they want to apply those principles. And I don't know, maybe they do work. I've never really tried. But one thing that I know does work through actual testing on subjects in controlled experiments is color. You don't just pick colors that you like, you pick colors that you like, but that also do what you want them to do. If you pick a color that you like that's a very tranquil color and you put it in your kitchen, you're not really going to be getting a whole lot of energy to be working on things in the kitchen, which you kind of need some energy to do. At the same time, if you take a color that you really like, let's say you really like a red color and it's very vibrant, yeah, I love red. Well, you put it on your walls in your bedroom and you're not really going to be getting the kind of relaxation you would get in a room that you need to go to sleep. So you want to think a little bit about color, and I would suggest researching that as you go forward the next time you're going to be painting in your house. As I mentioned, yellow colors make people somewhat uncomfortable. Maybe for you they don't. Maybe you like yellow, 
and it's sunshiny and it makes you happy and you just want everything to be in yellow. And then you wonder why people are fidgety when they're in your house or they're always moving over to your kitchen as opposed to being in your living room or wherever because it's a different color. Perhaps that's the reason. And as I said in research, a lot of people find brown to be a very homey color and they like to sort of have the beiges and tans and they kind of makes them feel comfortable and relaxed. Uh, I'm not one of those people. I'm sort of an exception in that. Brown to me is kind of poopy and I'm not a big fan of it. So I'm going to be applying the principle of the you know, subconscious mind with color by having that as a little bit of a tone in our Tuscan red because subconsciously I probably still do have those sorts of subconscious connections to the color brown but when I see it straight out I'm not particularly fond of it. And I think that the subconscious part of it is supposed to have an Italian with wood and leather and those sorts of things that, that sort of make us feel a little warmer. But while I have those affinities for leather and wood, I don't particularly have those affinities for a brown wall. So the psychology of color is for the majority of people and not necessarily exactly for you. So you still want to pick colors you like, but be aware of how the colors you pick are going to affect other people. Also, remember that brighter shades, you know, we have the nice lighter colors, like this has a light green currently, or a light something, those are generally more casual in research. Bolder colors are more formal. So, you, if you want to sort of create more of a feeling of elegance, try to move a little more upscale, you can just go to a bolder version of the color that you like. It may seem a bit much to you, but that is because you're thinking of your house as your casual living space, most likely. But if you want to sort of create that formal dining room or that formal living room for people to come over, you can accomplish that by making the colors bolder. That triggers in people's mind a richness. The rich colors, also a richness of the room and will make the room seem more opulent than it really is. It's the same stupid room you had before, but it feels a little more opulent. Add into that some accents here or there, and you can really get a lot of bang for your buck. You can make a room look like it's a $3,000 room, and you only spent $150. Bucks. That is what you can do with color. So, I would suggest go ahead and do a little research on that as you're thinking about your different colors in your different room. Don't just pick things because you think they're nice or whatever else. I mean, you, I'm not saying don't do it. Do it if you want to do it. It's your house. Do whatever you want. But if you're looking at a couple of different colors and you like a bunch of different colors and you're trying to make a decision on which one, do a little look at the research on what kind of effect those colors produce and how other people are going to perceive those colors subconsciously. So that way you can have your house fit the way you want it to fit have people feel comfortable where you want them comfortable, or energetic where you want them energetic. You don't want them falling asleep in an area of the house where you want them to be more active. So, look at the different colors. That's going to wrap it up for this episode. I'm going to be doing some work around here, but I'm not going to be filming it because it's getting to be kind of dark. And as I mentioned, with the exception of this room, and maybe the upstairs bedroom that I just talked about, Everywhere else around here is so dark. Like I said, a jar of lightning bugs is about as bright as most of the lights around here. So I really can't film anything once the sun starts to go down, which is why I've been limited on what sort of things I can show you that I've been doing around the house. As I've been working on some of the wall repairs, I showed you a little bit about how to do them, and then I didn't show you me doing them in fast motion all around the house because, well, it was too dark for the camera to work very well. So I'm going to go ahead and do some work around the house here, and you're not going to get to see it. Oh well, I'm sorry, you can't see everything that happens around here. And then tomorrow, what you're going to get to see is some light fixtures going in in different rooms, and then you get to see some painting perhaps. Maybe not a lot of painting, I think I'll be doing a lot of things that I don't film this week, and you must be getting to see sort of a after view. I'll be splicing in the before from the original house condition tour along with the after so that way you can see one with the other. That's what we're going to try to go with this week. I'm going to go ahead and do some work that you don't get to see 
and then I will be seeing you again tomorrow when we install some light fixtures.